Hello everyone. The evolution of language in five minutes. My goodness. Okay, let's give it a try. The first two things I want to emphasize are that language did not just pop into existence in an instant. It has a history and there are probably several steps we have to consider. And the second thing is that it's not just about speech. A lot of people study bird song and how it relates to language and so forth. Not just sounds and speech and it's not just syntax. But what I focused on is the evolution of language beginning with communication and with the functional aspects of pragmatics and meaning and that kind of thing. The first steps, I think, had to have taken place in gestures. And there are a number of reasons for that. One is if we look at our evolutionary ancestors, the great apes, great apes uh, communicate with one another much more flexibly and much more um, based on learning uh, in the gestural modality. And their vocalizations are mostly pretty hardwired. Uh, in addition, uniquely human gestures are such things as pointing and pantomiming, and those uh, we can use cross-linguistically. We can use them with people that don't share our language at all and still communicate quite effectively. And in addition, uh, the gestures of pointing and pantomiming are first, before language, in children, in ontogeny. So gestures seem to be primary both in our grade A relatives evolutionarily and ontogenetically, and we can use them in across different languages and cultures and still communicate effectively. So they're somehow basic, more basic than conventional languages. Uh, we also need to get more generally a cooperative way of life in human evolution. So using gestures like pointing and pantomiming require us to share certain what's called common ground. So if I'm pointing to something, that doesn't mean anything if you just look over there. But if we have common ground that we're searching for a good watering hole and you look over there and you see a water, well then you know what, the, what it is. So it's in our common ground what we're doing and therefore the pointing. So this is kind of a cooperative cognition and cooperative motivation is I inform you of things helpfully. So in human communication, uh, we just tell people things that we think they will find interesting or relevant, whereas almost all other animal communication is about getting others to do what you want them to do, imperatively. So the cooperative motivation and the cooperative cognition underlie even the very first step of uniquely human communication of pointing and pantomiming for informative purposes based on common ground. Then, with the emergence of modern humans, relatively recently in human evolution, we get communicating with conventions. And this is going to lead, in the end, to all of the 6,000 or however many different conventional languages there are in the world today. Um, and uh, uh, this emerged with modern human culture, where lots of other things became conventional. Conventional cultural practices for doing all kinds of things. Social norms. Uh, all kinds of agreements about how to do them. And, and I think probably the first steps of conventional linguistic communication were gestural, something similar to modern day sign languages that begin being based on iconic gestures, but then become ritualized away from their um, iconic meanings. And so they become truly conventional. They are just uh, have the meaning they do just based on agreement. At that same time, they probably switched over to the vocal modality at some point, uh, based on the fact that vocalizations uh, travel farther in a forest or whatever, allow you to have your hands free, whatever that is. We switch over to conventional forms of communication and eventually to the vocal modality. The grammar of languages emerges, in my view, through use. So I have a usage-based view of grammar, that grammar emerges from patterns of use of meaningful linguistic conventions. Uh, we know how grammaticalization works because there are lots of studies of the historical processes of grammaticalization uh, today. Of course, there are universals in language because there are universals, not because there's an innate universal grammar, but because uh, humans' cognition and human needs for human communication are universal across all people. So we have the same tools of cognition, we have the same needs to communicate, and, and, and we have limitations of information processing that lead to the kind of ellipsis and things that lead to grammaticalized constructions. And so what we get is 
the emergence of morphological marking and syntactic constructions through the grammaticalization process, and this has led to 6,000 different languages in the world today. So to summarize, I would say the evolution of language to human language took place in three major steps. The first is gestures in a cooperative social environment. The second is the conventionalization of the process and the emergence of the vocal modality. And the third is grammaticalization into the morphological and syntactic constructions that we see in all of the 6,000 different languages in the world today. Thank you very much.